this video I'm going to go into a, a quick installation and, and set up of a virtual center in this product that I've been using for a little bit here uh, called V Commander from Embodix. It's a management tool for your vSphere environment. You can connect multiple V centers um, into the product and have a single pane of glass of your, your VMware environment, uh, mainly from an operational standpoint. Uh, so this video won't get into all the details and all the features of the product. Uh, get into the quick installation and set up a, a single virtual center server. And in some subsequent videos, I'll, I'll probably go ahead and get into some more of the other features. So let's go. Let's get into the install here. Um, if we double click on the executable, we'll go ahead and start the installation. So we're going to click next. We're going to accept the license agreement and then click next. We're going to choose the path. We're going to keep the defaults. And in this case, we're going to choose the SQL Server installation. We're going to go ahead and click install. Now you're going to need an account for the software to run under. So in this case we're going to create a local account for this to run under. You can also use a domain account um, but a local account will work uh, just as well. So if we go into uh, local users and groups you'll see I created an account here already. I'm going to use this account uh, for the installation here. Let's go ahead and let me make sure I have the, the right password for this account. So I'll go ahead and reset it here. And then once we have the account, we can go back to the other screen and enter in the username and password. And then we'll go ahead and click Next. We'll keep the default ports and now we're at the, the SQL Server uh, configuration piece. So you're going to have to have a database created beforehand or um, right now at this time. I'll just go ahead right now and create the, the actual database. I already have the server there now. So I'll go ahead and open up the, um, the SQL Manager. And I'll connect to the server that has the database, uh, or SQL Server running. And then from there, I'll go ahead and just create a new database. We'll give it a name. And we'll go ahead and click OK. go in here and just in the services just to make sure SQL Server the service is running and since the SQL service is running we go ahead and copy the uh, the instance name here and then the uh, we'll go ahead and enter the database name and then we'll have to uh, put in a username and password that has access to the actual database. Uh, we can select to put icons on the desktop and in the quick launch bar. Click next. And then the summary comes up. We'll go ahead and click done here. So as we can see here, the service was installed and created. So if we go into the web browser here, to the HTTPS and local host, it will bring up the logon page for vCommander. 
the uh, default logon um, is going to be super user with the password of secret and once you uh, put in the username and password you just have to put in a valid key to be able to log on into the product so we'll enter in our key here and we'll click login and it'll bring us to the default landing page so from this landing page uh, we can go into the operations area and to quickly just add a virtual center server you can go to add managed uh, systems type in the server name uh, change the default port if necessary and then put in a username and password that has access to the to the uh, virtual the virtual center server and then we'll just click OK and once the process is complete or the task is complete we'll see that that virtual center show up underneath the operations area here in the uh, in the left hand corner of the portal so one of the first things you're going to want to do um, when the virtual center is added is to retrieve the historical uh, events so you can change the time frame how far you go back and then click OK so this will go out and, and, and pull all the history uh, historical events uh, mainly for reporting purposes so if you want to get some trending information it'll, uh, you can do a report for uh, with the historical data that it's, it's actually collecting here. So that's all you need to do to get vCommander installed. And we also configured one virtual center server uh, into the product as an initial step and retrieve some of the history from the, um, from the virtual center. That, that step can be repeated for each virtual center. I've had upwards of 30 virtual centers uh, configured with V Commander and had no no apparent issues with managing it. Uh, the, the product seems to be pretty quick. Uh, one recommendation is to use the is to use the SQL Server database instead of the default Postgres when you have more than 500 virtual machines that you need to to manage with this product. Um, if, if you have a large environment, there will be noticeable slowness when you're wor uh, working in the UI and it's trying to pull all that data from the database. So that's it for this video. In another video, I'll actually go through some of the other features and functionality. There is way too many features and functionalities to go through in one video, in one setting. So I'll go ahead and split those up and, and, and go through some other and create some other videos um, to show off some of the other features of the product.